What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode eight of the Riz podcast. Alhamdulillah, um, we are uh, joined today by someone very, very special. Um, you may or may not know who he is today, but I think in a few years' time, um, he's going to be a household name, inshallah. Um, he's going to be someone who's uh, going to be on the world stage uh, in a very, very short space of time to come. Um, I'm joined today with Hamza Shiraz. Uh, Hamza, he's a professional boxer. Current record of 9-0? Oh. Yep, 9-0. Oh. 9-0, oh. undefeated. That's it, man. <laughs> cool, cool. So um, I want to I wanna dive into, obviously, kind of your life as a boxer yeah, yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, how that is for you, not only just, you know, as a person, but also, like, as a Muslim in that industry as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the ins and outs of it and things that you have to kind of, you know, say no to or mm. all these types of things. So yeah. just trying to understand, you know, how things go about. But before we get into, obviously, who you are today yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, where you are, uh, nine and no, oh, I think you've got like six KOs as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. some of that. So five, five, five nine, KOs. Yeah, yeah, five. So you've got like five KOs. There's on six the ones on its way, don't remember. Charla and Charla. So <clears> just <throat> wanted to kind of start at the top, then, bro. Like I think um, you started boxing when you were eight years old, if I'm right. That's it, eight years yeah? old. Yep. So just before you get to the age of eight, then what are the events leading up to? Uh, the de decision from your parents to say, look, let's put him into boxing. You know, were you a wild kid? You know, what what was the what was going on in that time? Yeah, no, it was never that cliche story of being that 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 wild kid who was hyperactive, who who um, was on the streets. It was never that. There's no sob story or not sob story, but kind of story behind me. It's just an honest kid working hard, just trying to achieve his dream. You know what I mean? So, yeah, before that, I was just your usual kid going to school, coming up from school. Guy in Moss, coming home, just just learning, just it was every day, just learning. And boxing was never introduced to me when I turned eight. It was always like since I was born, something my uncle was doing, like I said in my other interviews, something my granddad was doing. It was something I grew up watching. Like I would, I won't be watching CBBCs and that when I was little. I'll be watching boxing. Right. Okay. I'll be watching people getting punched in the face, thinking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to do that as well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, leading up to that, I was just your normal kid. I wasn't hyperactive, nothing like that. I was always interested in boxing, sports, cricket, everything okay. like that. Just everything. I was, I was, I was active. I wasn't hyperactive. I was an active kid. I was fit. I will do a bit of everything. But yeah, like I said, it was not that cliche story. It's just like I said, an honest kid just working mm -hmm. hard. So, so you're growing up now, um, like you said, you're not watching Blue Peter or anything like that. You're watching like, <laughs> who, who, are the, who are some of the people that are inspiring at this point? Like, uh, if you're talking about, you know, 15 years ago, you, you must be speaking about people like the end of Mike Tyson, Lennox That's Lewis, yeah, Prince yeah. Nassim, these type of people. Like, who are the, the, the main people that you used to watch and inspire you to kind of want to get in the ring? I'll tell you what I first watched. I stayed up to watch Hatton versus... Um, uh, Mayover. Okay. That's it. And I watched that. that was, I was a bit older then. But I watched that and I thought, whoa, this boxing, this boxing is serious. Like, yeah, yeah. that was the first time I ever watched a fight in America. Right. Anything like that. So that kind of opened my eyes a little bit. But before that, I used to just watch like Marquez, everyone, all the Mexicans, everyone. I used to watch them. And like I said, I used to watch them, take in everything. And I thought, listen, I want to I wanna get to that stage. At that age, it was more, oh, that's fun, blood. I know not, not every kid thinks blood's an amazing thing. Most kids get scared, but I don't know. It was kind of appealing to me. Do you know what I mean? Like getting punched in the face, entertaining people kind of thing. So that was, a, that was my main main um, focus. So you enjoyed uh, fighting for the entertainment of it, for, 100%. To, to kind of please the fans, That's please it. the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. That's what it was. It's, and it's not always about the people. It's sometimes about yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just like anything. You don't, you don't do things to please others. Mm -hmm. Some, well, some people do, but as... Coming from me, I don't do that. Do you know what I mean? Boxing, like I said, is something that's always been always been installed in me. So yeah, man, it's just like it is my job. It's what I knew. It's what I've always known. Like most kids would say, Oh, you have to pass your GCSEs, you have to pass your A levels. In my case, it was it was never that. It was listen, son, do well. My parents, my mother, my father always told me, listen, do the best you can. Like there's no stress, there's no thing of passing your GCSEs or passing your A levels or passing your SATs. Yeah, yeah. Just do the best you can. And as long as you know what you want in life, that's 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 the main that's the main goal kind of thing. Wow. So I always knew that I wanted to do boxing, and I, I think I, I did end up passing my GCSEs, not my A levels. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I passed my GCSEs and that. And you know what I mean? Like loads of kids nowadays have the pressure of passing exams, but my kind of advice to them kids would be: if you don't want to do it, obviously listen to your parents. I'm saying don't listen to your parents. But I'm saying if you don't want, if you if G, if education is not your main focus, then put your energy into something that 
you want to do. Mm. You want to do because then, then it's not time wasted. It's time well spent. You're investing in yourself for the future. So yeah, that's that's what kind of where I'm at. <clears throat> that's really deep. So so you've always had this boxing kind of ingrained into you. You've always known from a very early age that look, this is what I want to do. I want to get into the ring, and I want to fight people, and I want to make people love me for this that's as well. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. So you've got like a true fighter's mentality. That's it. Because you, you seem like really calm and yeah, chilled, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So so so, what is it about you know um, going into uh, the ring that kind of changes you? It's when I, I tell you what, when my mentality in the ring and out the ring is two, I'm two different people. Like I said, now I'm more, I'm chilled, I'm, I'm just enjoying myself, I'm honest, you know what I mean? The hard working, whatever. But when it comes to switching on for fight night, it's a total different story. So I'll have, I'll have say, say to prepare for a 10 round fight, I'll have eight weeks, right? And in them eight weeks, I'm, I'll train hard, of course I train hard, I spar hard, I make sure everything, but the last couple of days away from the fight night is when I really switch on. Like, it's, it's, it is the future kind of the fight kind of thing. Like I have to, I put it pressure on myself. Like I have to win this fight. I have to win this people. Look how much my friends done for me. My family's done for me. The people around me, they've all put their, they've all put their hard work for the past month. If you think about it for the past 10 years, since I was eight for the past 12 years, they put everything into me. So this going into this fight is more battle getting like, if I win, it's not just me who wins, it's everyone around me who wins, everyone who supports me who wins. So that's the kind of mind frame I get in as in I can't fail, I cannot fail, like I can't afford to fail at this stage. Do you know what I mean? I can never afford to fail kind of thing. Yeah, so that's that really. <clears throat> cool, so 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 you, you, uh, you're growing up, you're watching boxing, now you get to the age of eight yeah. um, and your, your parents make that decision. Um, I don't know how much, you know, how much was that led by you? Did you say, look, you know, put me in the gym or was that led by you? Or did, you, did your parents think, look, it's a good time for him to start yeah. you know, getting into sport and yeah. learning about something. He likes boxing. Yeah. You know, what was, what was that, you know, turning point, I suppose, for you to actually get into to the get boxing into the ring yeah. rather than cricket or football or, yeah, yeah. or anything like that? I used to play a lot of cricket because my dad used to be a professional cricketer before. Right. But um, cricket didn't have the same pill as boxing did to me like I said get, getting people watching people get punched in the face but what the turning point was was I think it was I used to go to um, a club called Debden Amateur Boxing Club back in the day this is when I was 8 this is the first club I ever walked into right. and what it was actually it was a football tournament the day I actually entered a boxing gym and I was a bit mad but it was a football tournament and I was there and I see I see some famous players I can't remember who used to play for Tottenham back in the day um, Jermaine Defoe I think it was Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was there and he was doing a tour of this academy and in the academy, there was a gym. So everyone was following Jermaine Defoe around and everything. And I saw a boxing gym. So I've just wandered off myself. And then on the wall, there was a number. And then I went, I ran to my dad. I go, oh, come with me, dad. Come with me, dad. Look, there's this <laughs> number. And I go, oh, can you let me, I want, I want to start now. Yeah, yeah. Because he always said he would take me. But when the time was right, but obviously I figured out for myself. And I was like, oh, I want to get into the gym ASAP. Yeah, yeah. So he called a number and then the coach had come down. And ever since then, I went to the gym. And I remember I, still, I walked in the gym. And the smell of like the leather bags hit me and the hard work and the sweat. I know it sounds mad, but if you go into the gym, you can actually smell it. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, you can yeah. actually smell it. And I think that's what it was. I walked in there and then when I walked out, I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. This is it kind of thing. I didn't think, oh, yeah, this is, oh, I want to be a pro. I didn't think that at the time. At the time, it was just, oh, I want to keep coming back here and I want to keep getting better. And then eventually I went back there with my cousin and he was the first person actually sparred. Right, okay. And then, yeah, we both come out the ring, bloody noses, everything. And I was like, yeah, this, this is it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is it, man. <laughs> cool. So so, so, so now you're, you're training, you're sparring, you're, you're, you know, like you said, you're, you're getting into proper fights where your noses are getting busted That's up it, yeah. and, and you're loving it. Absolutely, yeah. you know, enjoy. I try, I try my best to move my head defensive wise. Like, touch wood, I'm like, I haven't come out of a fight seriously hurt or injured or cut or anything not, not yet anyway you don't know what happens in it but if it did I, I don't think i'd be too phased anyway because it's part of the past when it? it's just like anyone that like if you train to become a lawyer whatever whatever the lawyer's job does it's it's gonna happen yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like you can't go in the shower without getting wet yeah, you know yeah I mean? exactly so, yeah if you're going into the boxing ring be prepared to get in 100 percent. it's exactly so your attitude to that is, is just look it's just part of me getting to where I need to get to. I'm going to try to avoid as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. If I get punched in the face that's in it. order to get the other guy down, that's, it. Straight. that's how we do it. That's it. That's exactly how it is. It's simple, really. As long as I win. As long as I win, that's yeah, the main yeah, thing, yeah. as long as I win. And so outside of the ring, um, at this point, as you're growing up, um, obviously um, growing <laughs> up, I think you grew up in Slough, right? Yeah, I was, I was born in Slough, okay. but I was raised in East London, Ilford. Okay, yeah. so you've come from two, two areas which, you know, for all intents and purposes aren't really the the kind of the best areas for exactly. people to grow up yeah, in you yeah. know they are quite rough especially yeah. in those days as well yeah, yeah. um you know 
did you ever get into kind of altercations with people with the kind of weapons that you had? Yeah. Um, you know, how did you kind of deal with those situations? When I was younger, to be fair, I was always a skinny lad. So even if I was boxing and I got into street, I'd probably still get beat up. <laughs> <When Okay. laughs> I, I'd probably still get beat up. But um, no, I, I never put myself in them situations. Okay. I think it's nowadays the case of, it's not even if you go out, you're going to fight, look for trouble. Trouble can come finding you. It's about you not putting yourself in them situations. And my parents always, always, they always told me that. They go, listen, even if you don't look for trouble and you go out, trouble will somehow find you, especially in, like you said, in the areas we live in. Like nowadays, it's just getting worse. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm at home most of the time. Or if I'm out, it's it's always for, for a reason. I'm never out just for the sake of being out. But yeah, like you said, nah, man, it was never, it was never that. It was never like, like I said, I was young. I probably got and I probably still get beat up, like you said. But nah, I think, I think it was just, not putting myself in them situations. I think that's what it, that's what it all boiled down to. I never got myself into them altercations or into fights or anything like that. And the years I grew up in school, all the school problems between schools, that, that all finished. Mm -hmm. So I think the years from year seven to 11, there was n literally no issues. I can't even remember anyone fighting. It was all, it was all good, man. It was that's all good. good. That's good. Yeah, I think, um, I think when a lot of people ask me, like, you know, what, what is it like living in Slough or yeah. what is it like living in London or whatever yeah. it is, um, you know, my answer is always, you can you can find whatever you want. Hundred percent. You know, if you want good, you can find good. If you want bad, you can find, find bad. bad. If yeah, you want simple. trouble, you can find it. Yeah. You, do you know what I'm saying? Like it's what but, you want in it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So so from your perspective, you've always just kind of kept yourself to it yourself. Yeah. Just kind of spread love, spread positivity, and you know, kind of kept everything you know, negative away from you. Just focus on what you were doing. Yeah, hundred percent. It's that it's that simple. Like it's just exactly what you said. Whatever you want, you're gonna get, regardless of it depends how much you want it. That's that's what it boils down to. Yeah, it's just like you just hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, so 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 as you're in school, then like it's a bit mad because for me, when I was in school, my my head was always in the clouds. I was yeah. always thinking about okay, what am I going to do? You know about this. What yeah. am I going to do about that? And yeah. it was never focused about the actual lesson in the class. And <laughs> you know, I wasn't I wasn't too interested in in, in in it at all. Yeah. Um. You know, I was good at it. You know, I did well. You know, whenever I needed to kind of just get things done, I got things done. Yeah, yeah. I was never what I was really interested in, and I didn't really have anything that I was kind of doing. So it wasn't necessarily like, you know, for example, this podcast, I wasn't podcasting back then, yeah, right? Yeah. You had something which was very tangible, which was very real. Yeah. Um, not only was it a kind of a skill set that you had from a young age, now you're coming into your teen years, you're studying, you're working, but, you know, your mind must have been in the gym the whole time, right? Yeah. Um, and on top of all of that, you know, like you said, your uncle, your grandfather, they actually had boxing careers. Yep. So it's not even like the path is unknown. Yeah. You know, there's people very close to exactly. you that, that know yeah. how it was to... a lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so how did you keep motivated, you know, through school? You mentioned that you also went on to A-levels as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what was your drive and your motivation kind of in school? And, and you know, how did you keep yourself on the right side, I, I suppose, of, uh, of of all the teachers and yeah, all the yeah. grades, etc.? I was lucky to be fair in school from year seven to I think 12 I was in school I always had teachers back in like they knew I was I was all like hardcore into my boxing they knew I wasn't a trouble kid so they all they gave me their full their full support like say if I remember once I went to um, a, a press conference I can't remember who it was and I told the teachers I got this I'm not going to be in tomorrow because I'm going to a press conference and they fully supported it they said yes no worries as long as you're not out and you're actually going here by all means go so I think I was I was very lucky and also going along the school journey, a good mate of mine, Hamza, Hamza Kizza, who he also supported me a lot. He was, um, I met him, in, obviously I met him in school, but he also was interested in boxing and funnily enough was from the same area back back home and all that. So there was a lot, there was a lot there where we had common ground. So from then I've never looked back, like he's come to the gym with me, he's everywhere with me kind of thing. But yeah, answering your question about staying motivated and everything, I think it was... It was a lifestyle. It's not even about staying motivated. I don't need to stay motivated. It's it's because I know where I want to be. Do you know what I mean? Okay. I don't need to be like, oh yeah, there's, there's days where I don't want to get up for training. I have to get up for training because yeah, it is my yeah. job. Kind of. You know, you hear a lot of boxers say, oh yeah, you have to stay motivated. Motivation is a key. If it's your job and if you know what you're going to do, there's no need to stay motivated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there yeah. is no need to stay motivated. <laughs> But I think that's what all that all it is. Like when I was young, like you're saying, I was in lessons. I used to, I used to actually enjoy most lessons. Um, so, because I always used to know, like after a hard day at school, I'd always go to the gym okay. every day, Monday to Saturday. Sunday used to have off. My routine's always been like that. Okay. I used to always, 
I used to know, listen, as long, when I go home, I'm going to the gym. So it's all cool. Whatever happens in school, as long as I don't get too much attention, I'm cool. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I can go yeah, to yeah. the gym. But yeah, man, staying motivated has never been an issue. I don't need to stay motivated. So, so your parents never kind of threatened you like, oh, if you if you mess up in school, you're not going boxing that same night now? No, they didn't. They okay. didn't, to be fair. They probably said, if you're going to mess up in school, we're going to get your hardest sparring at the gym. <laughs> you're going to get your face punched in. <laughs> I think that's what it was. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, 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 talk to me now um, about your your first fight. Um, well, your first uh, tournament. Amateur fight sorry. or pro fight? Your first tournament. So okay. the first tournament that you fought in. Amateur fight. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so again, it sounds to me like you you just want to just go in. Yeah. And then just absolutely destroy the guy in front yeah, of you. Yeah. When I was younger, it, my mentality wasn't that. Okay. Because I wasn't the strongest kid. Okay. I had to use more of my skill and my footwork to move. Because most kids were stronger than me because I was a late, mature. I, like, a lot of kids were stronger than me at okay. the time. I used to enjoy the training when I was young. But the fighting, it was, I used to get nervous, man. I used to control it. I used to get in there and do my thing. But I used to get nervous. Like, oh, shit. I'm right, not, I'm not okay, strong okay, enough. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I used to get it done. I used to go in there. I, used to, I won the majority of my amateur fights. So it wasn't too bad. But I think the more, the older I was getting, the mature I was getting, it was better. I was enjoying it more. And then... Yeah, my first tournament, that's it, going back. I remember before my fight, I was bloody nervous in the toilet. I, was, I swear I was going to vomit. I, swear I, had that, I felt proper nervous. I was gonna, it was at um, a hotel, a little hotel show, okay. a dinner show. Yeah, yeah. And then it was quite funny because I only had a day's notice because my coach told me, listen, you can have your first fight tomorrow. I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And then I woke up the next day and I'm like, oh, no, let's not go. <laughs> I, was, I was nervous. But um, after I won my fight, it was the best feeling ever. Because um, if you ask most boxers nowadays, when they're preparing in the chain room, you kind of ask yourself, oh, why did I put myself through this? Why do I got to be a boxer? Why? Do you know what I mean? Why? I could have yeah, yeah. just been like a footballer, this, that, the other. But then afterwards, when you win or after you have a good fight and you got all the crowd's appreciation, then you remember, oh, yeah, this this is exactly why I was doing it. So after my first tournament, I come back and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying this. But the same thing happened like the second fight, third fight, fourth fight. I think like 30 fights in, that's when the nerves started to go. And I thought, yeah, right, okay. I'm going to go in there and just do what I can do. Win, win. It, it got to a stage, right, in the amateurs, because it it's a lot, amateur boxing is not the same as pro. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot more dodgy decisions and close decisions. Ho- it goes in the hometown's favour. In pro? It, no, in amateur. Oh, really? In amateur, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. In pros, it's not like that. I don't think it's like that anyway. Okay. Because you've got like the TV, everyone watching, you know what I mean? But in amateur, it was like that. So, and I lost a few bad decisions as well where I thought I oh, won. Wow. But um, I, it got it's to- It's kind of like no one's watching, so we can just kind of do what we want. There you go, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It got to a point where I'd turn up for my fight, I'd warm up, and if I won or lose, I didn't really care. Honestly, it got to a stage where I just thought, listen, uh, if, if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. Listen, I'm just going to go home kind of thing. But then um, I think- Are, I, are they mainly point-based uh, decisions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, point-based okay. decisions. Because it's only three rounds, isn't it? Okay. But um, when I was, I think, 17, obviously this is going uh, to, towards the end of my amateur career, I was meant to get picked for the Commonwealth Games. So I went up to Sheffield, had a good wow. training camp and that. And I didn't get picked <laughs> for whatever reason it was. I didn't get picked. And then I think I just, I lost like, not motivation, but love, love for the amateur game. I lost a lot of it. And then I had like time off. Well, I was still going to the gym, but I was only going three days a week. <clears throat> and I did this time, I was training at Five Star, um, which is a gym I was trained on finished my amateur career on and I was training with Eddie Kelly at the time and then boom I was just it's like oh do you know what I mean and that's how I felt that's how I kind of felt I don't know how to explain how I felt so just talk, talk to me a little bit about the the Commonwealth because this is actually part of the like this is Team GB right yeah yeah, yeah. so this is the official Team GB yeah, yeah, for yeah. the Commonwealth yeah, Games yeah. What, what was that process like kind of getting picked and then yeah. so I'm guessing you went to a camp yeah um how long was that camp? What was that like? What it was, I didn't actually win the competition I was meant to, to get picked for the games. It was, they had these um, belts, these new, this new idea they come out with and they picked me to fight for it because my I wasn't too bad at the time. And then I ended up beating all the kids and I got the belt. Okay. And then, and then one of the England coaches was there and then he come up, he goes, yeah, come over. He goes, come over to the camp, do the camp with us. Get picked. He goes, I probably will think you get picked. Mm-hmm. Sold me dreams, obviously, in my head. I was like, yeah, yeah, the coach said this, this, and the other. <laughs> then it hit me afterwards. I was like, bro, oh, listen, this is this is the truth. And you get told lies and you just got to deal with them. Mm-hmm. And then I went there and I had, it was good. I, I what I, did I enjoy it? I don't know because um, it was, I was just me to myself there. I was there for like three days living on my own kind of thing. And I was, I was what, 16 at the time. And I just weren't enjoying it. And then come home, didn't get picked. I wasn't really shocked to be fair because I kind of knew that for the last day. 
I didn't get picked, and then that's it. And then I said to my dad, "Listen, I don't think I, li- I don't think I like this girl, like like this game anymore." And wow. he was like, "He was like, listen, he's like, go to the gym, carry on doing what you're doing." He goes, "And just just take take everything as it comes." And then I was studying. I think I was doing my A levels at this time, and I failed them. So then this is like, oh, <laughs> listen, what, what do I do now? Kind of thing. And then yeah, yeah. I done an electrical apprenticeship. Yeah. And I done. I was doing halfway through that. I was halfway through that. I was still training Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I was going to gym, doing my apprenticeship. And then one day I went to the gym and then my pro, my, my coach said to me, listen, do you want to turn pro? And then I thought, wow, like this, it opened, it kind of opened up. He goes, listen, sleep on it, have a couple of weeks, think about it. Sat down, chatted to my, my dad. And then he goes, yeah, he goes, why not? He goes, and then yeah, he thought, why not? At the time, I didn't think I'd be strong enough because like I said, remember I was saying I was, I didn't have any, I had well, like one stoppage in my whole amateur career, or two stoppages, which is not a lot out of how many fights I had. So I was never strong and I, was, I wasn't I was doubting myself, but I thought, hmm, shall I do it? Shall I not? Shall I do it? Shall I not? And then um, on my 25th, uh, on my on May 25th, I turned uh, 18. Yeah, and then um, I had a massive signing. And then that's when it hit me like, okay, cool. Like I'll sign my pro contract and I thought, yeah, cool, I'm ready for this. And then I had a whole new, whole new mindset, the mindset I've got now, I had a whole new mindset. I go, listen, as long as I give it 100% in the gym, yeah, I should be good on fight night. And then, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's where I was at at the time. So, so you've gone from kind of being in the camp with Team GB and that almost drained a lot of the love and the passion that you had 100%. of the sport out of you. Yeah. Um, because it was kind of people selling you the dream. It was just a promise. It was, it was yeah, false exactly. promises. Yeah, false promise, yeah. Um, it, basically, it sounds like they just kind of wanted to get the numbers up, yeah. kind of throw you in there. It's like, almost like it. a sparring partner exactly. for someone. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and you know, he's a decent guy. Yeah. Chuck him in there. Experience, and we'll promote the yeah, other people. Blah, 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 so on and so forth. Right, yeah. okay, you've gone <clears> home now. And then within a short space of time, you've uh, you flopped your A-levels. <laughs> you've gone into your electrical um, apprenticeship yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is, again, probably about a year, a year and a half, yeah. two years. yeah. Um, until you've turned pro. So, so how old were you when you turned pro? Uh, 18. You were 18. On my birthday, I signed my contract. On the, on my okay, 18th so on the 25th birthday. of yeah. May, on yeah. your birthday, you signed. Yep. Um, so leading up to that then, leading up to you getting signed, um, you're signed by Frank, Frank Warren. Warren. Yep, Hall of Fame promoter. Yeah. Hall of Fame promoter. That's it. Big dog. That's it. <laughs> so so what are, kind of, how did that come about? So from the decision of, okay, I want to be pro, and the reason why I kind of want to go down this line of questioning is yeah, because yeah. there's going to be a lot of people that are watching this who are maybe young boxers yeah. um, who want to take this route. You know, they're, yeah. they're listening to what you're saying. They're yeah. like, I-, I think the same way as him. Yeah. You know, I have the same kind of routine. Yeah. You know, I want to get to kind of where he's got to. Yeah. Um, you getting that, that contract then, what were the kind of the, the, the events that are surrounded that from, from going pro kind of getting that contract in your hand, yeah. reviewing the different contracts that you had and then yeah. signing with Frank. Yeah. What it was, I didn't have loads of options. I had the one option. Okay. It was literally that simple. I had the one option. There was no, oh, this promoter wants to come to me, this promoter wants to come to me because I wasn't a standout amateur. Okay. I was just your basic experienced amateur. That's okay. what I was at the time. And um, my coach at the time, Eddie, who was at Firestar, he he come over to me and he told me, he told me straight, listen, do you want to turn pro? Got the contact, this, that, the other. And I go, uh, like, obviously I slept in, like I said, and I said, yeah, let's go for it. And then, um, yeah, Frank, oh, this is why I'm extremely lucky and I'm grateful for this. Frank Warren and Andy Ailey, my manager, they gave me the opportunity cause, through my coach. Uh, yeah, and then on my, on my birthday, like I was saying, I had, I think like, 300 people turn up for my signing. It was crazy, honestly. I did not expect it. I ain't seen this many people in my life before. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. Like, this is the first time I was getting interviewed and everything. Yeah, and I, was yeah. just, I remember I was sitting there signing my contract. And then I can't remember what channel it was come up to me, an Asian channel. Yeah, I thought, yeah, yeah. One of the Pakistani channels come up to me, oh, can we do an interview, please? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's do an interview. And I got up and then they were asking me questions and I, I didn't know how to answer it. I was like, oh, this is a bit thing. And then no, I got on with it. And then after that, I went home and I was like, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is where I want to be. And I gave it 100% in the gym. And then, um, yeah, that's what it is. Going back to your question, sorry. There was not many contracts. It was okay. just literally one and it was a basic one as well. Okay. And I, but I, mean, I took it, obviously, I'm going to grab the opportunity of both hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Frank Warren. <laughs> I've gone from failing my A-levels, being, you know what I mean? It's being sold dreams to Frank Warren giving the opportunity. So I, I grabbed it with both hands, man. Cool. So, and, and what's your relationship like with Frank? <clears> you know, how... What I would kind of want to kind of move on to now is now you're you're in the professional That's ranks, it, yep. and you know professional boxing I think is going through almost like a renaissance right now. Yeah, it's 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 going crazy. Yeah, uh, the game very is, popular. is, very is popular. getting very popular. Yep. Um, you and I met last week at the Adam Saleh yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Winfinity yeah, yeah. uh, charity boxing event last week. 
Um, that was actually mentioned, you know, even by Eddie Hearn recently. Yeah. Um, he's doing the KSI Logan yeah, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so so YouTube is now kind of bringing its influence into boxing now yeah. as well. Yeah. So so from from your perspective now, you know, as an eighteen year old, you've signed with Frank. He's he's a Hall of Fame promoter. Um, he, he's an absolute legend in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, he works with people like Tyson Fury at yeah, the moment as man, well. Yeah. Um, he was uh, Prince Nassim's manager as well. Yeah, yeah. The guy comes from a from a massive massive pedigree. <clears throat> What pressure does he kind of put on to you? Does he put any pressure? Is it more from yourself? And I suppose the main question is, what do you need to live up to now? Yeah. Um, you know, now that you're working with somebody like Frank. Yeah, yeah. At the time, there was no pressure when I signed my contract because I didn't know how big it actually was until my debut. Okay. So I thought, yeah, I signed my contract now. And in training, and that it was, it was, it was a lot better. It was much more pro based. Okay. It was a lot better, like training twice, three times a day, even. Sparring was a lot longer, harder, sparring men, fully grown men. And it was good. That was, that, was, that was a change. And then, right, coming to my debut now, which was on the 27th of September at the Copper Box Arena, which was a big arena. I was used to fighting in front of, what, 200 people max in the hall, in like small hall shows. And then I've gone straight to like debut, debuting at the Copper Box Arena under yeah, yeah. Billy Joe Saunders' um, wow. uh, card. So I've got there now. Uh, I weighed in on the same day because that's what you normally do for four rounders. And then I was just sitting around and I was with, like, just me. It, at the time, there wasn't a lot of us because I was a bit green to it. And it was just literally me and my coach. And we were sitting there and I was like, I was, like looking around like, whoa. Like, there, I think there was like <laughs> 20,000 seats and I was just looking like, oh, sh- whoa, whoa, this is mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I've gone to warm up, put my gloves on. And what it is, the gloves are uh, 10 ounce gloves and they're a lot pro. And I put them on, I'm like, whoa, I'm about to get smashed in the face with this. This is different to the amateur game. But I've walked out, I've like walked out and, and I've got, as I've got in the ring, I've looked around and it's just like, it's just seats packed, packed, packed full of people. And it's the most support I've ever had. I think I had like 300, 300 odd people there. Wow. It was crazy. The support was like mad. And then that, that's when it hit me. That's when I thought, okay, listen, you're Frank Warren fighter now. You need to fix up and show them what you're about. Yeah, yeah. And then I got the second round stoppage, which was a surprise to everyone. It literally, even a massive surprise to myself because the guy I fought, and it was, I don't think he ever been stopped before that. Wow. In like 40 odd bouts. And yeah, I stopped him in the second round. It was just a what it's the maddest feeling I've ever had because I was not expected to do it. And it kind of like I kind of like stamped my mark like oh, there's a new kid on the scene now. Not many people knew who I was, and they still yeah, don't yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, but inshallah, they will get to know. Allah. But um, yeah, they kind of I kind of stamped my thing. And Frank Warren is there, and um, I spoke to him afterwards, and he was like, "Yeah, well done." This at the other, and listen, now I've boxed in every arena in London. Right, I mean, okay. so that I think that speaks for itself how much belief he has in me how much belief a manager has in me. And yeah, we're selling the tickets. We're, we're fighting, we're winning. That's the main thing. We're winning. We're, we're, every day we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So again, you know, you've, you've made your transition now into the, into the pros. Um, you mentioned that your first amateur fight that you had, you know, you, you're a bag of nerves. You're really nervous about it. You know, what, what's your mindset like um, going into your first fight? You mentioned again that you were, you were quite green yeah, yeah, yeah. and you weren't too sure too of it. Too sure, of course, yeah. So were you kind of, you know, again, like what, what's your kind of thought process going into this fight? You want to win, of course, but, yeah. you know, how are you, how are you thinking at this I point? I was confident that I'd win. I knew I'd win. I knew I'd win without that because of how much hours of training and practice I put in. Because in professional training, it's a lot more specific to what you're actually going to do. But yeah, I knew I'd win, but I didn't know I'd win in that good fashion. Okay. So yeah, I've won and then... It was just crazy. Like I said, I can't explain the feeling because it's mad. But yeah, it's a lot. The ner- comparing it to my first fight, I I knew I'd win. I wasn't as nervous as my first fight because I'm a lot more mature now. Okay. And um, yeah, I had a good head on me, and I went in there and I said, "Listen," so I said to myself, "You've trained hard enough for this, so there's no point. There's no point being nervous now." But as I got in there, twenty thousand seats would make anyone nervous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who's yeah, not, yeah. Who's not? But I'd uh, performed in front of that before. But as soon as the bell went, I was on it. I was on it. Good, that's good. And and you mentioned about your 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 training. So I want to talk a little bit about you know the the, the kind of the work that you put into yep. um, what you do. Like you you've mentioned it a couple of times in this interview. This is your job. You wake yeah. up and this is what you're you're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's kind of your your take on it as well, right? Yeah. So so your your training routine. Again, you mentioned that you've you had to step up from amateur to to professional training. Yep. Who who's driving all of this? Uh, you know, is this coming from you? Is this coming from everyone around you? Is your is your father kind of helping you make these decisions? You know, what's the kind of process between changing from amateur to a pro, getting that training, yeah. getting a whole team yeah. around you, yeah, etc. Yeah. It's a massive difference because, like you said, you just hit the nail on the head. You need a team. You need a solid team around you. My first, I'd say, four fights, I didn't have that. I was, I was building, but I didn't have that. But now I've got. 
my dad, I've got my uncles, my uncle Arma, my uncle Gogs, I've got my best mate Kizar, I've got TB, I've got Sagrada Sports, I've got Adam. Like we've got a solid team now. So there's no ifs or buts now. There was never before, but now I've got a solid base where I can con- like I can solely concentrate on training. Mm. But yeah, training literally can see the, the difference between amateur and pro training is it's a lot more specific to what you're actually going to do. Right. It's a lot harder. It's a lot grittier. It's a lot more blood, sweat, tears, everything. It's just, it's just in the name really amateur and professional. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And it's a lot more intense. It's a, you need to bring on a lot more conditioning work, a lot more strength work, a lot more, uh, a lot more boxing work itself as well. But it's not only that it's, Ever since I've turned pro, I've, I've, I've like kind of conquered, like not conquered, but starting to get familiar with my own mind, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, like when in amateur, I never thought of that. It was just all physical. But now you just sit down and you just like sometimes think to yourself, you've put in the work. It's a whole, whole different, like, it's a whole different mind game the pro game is because you, you and your opponent can be fit as each other, strong as each other, everything on the same level. But that extra... Percentage, I think, is the mental game. Okay. That's what it is. Is how much you believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? How much you're sure you're going to become a world champion or you're going to win that fight. Because I, to be honest with you, I would never... The team i got around me now, if I didn't think I'd become a world champion, I'd be wasting their time. And that would be totally wrong. Do you agree? Do you know what Absolutely, I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's where I'm at now. Yeah, I sit down and, like to myself sometimes. I think, listen, you, ha- like, you have to make your mark in this sport because... Everyone is investing, whether it be money, it be time, it be even giving me lifts to the gym, just little things. Like you have to remember these things. That is their percentage to, to helping you become what you want to become. And Alhamdulillah, I'm like a very, very confident in myself that I will reach that one day, whenever that be. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot more, it's a lot more deep. It gets a yeah, lot more yeah. deeper now. Do you, do you feel that your confidence comes from... Uh, a raw talent or do you feel that you've worked yourself to a position now where you have almost like a process for how you're going to beat the guy? I think, I wouldn't say it's talent because, you know what I mean, talent talent can only take you so far and from then it's all about hard work, how determined you are. I wouldn't say motivated because I don't like using that word, but how determined you are, how sure you are. Mm. That's what it boils down. How sure, do you know what I mean? How sure you are. But I think it's, like I said, it's my team who's also reassured me, even though I don't really need that reassurance. They, they know, they know what I go through, what I put in uh, for my best mate, for example. He sees what I go through every day, what I do, what I like, the diet, what I put in, everything. So yeah, that that's, that's what it basically is. And, and, and your, your training now. So, so you mentioned that you've had a routine pretty much since you were eight years old yeah, up yeah. until now then. So, so this is the kind of, I suppose the blood, sweat and tears, as you're saying that we don't get to see, yep. you know, we only see you on fight night. Exactly. You stop the guy in the second round. They don't see what you put in. It, it looks easy. Exactly. Right? That's what people say. Oh, the, the, the guy was a bum. That's it. That, you, that, know? That, you know, you know, that's what they say. The guy was a bum, this, that, the other. But I guarantee you, if the guy, if the guy beat me, he wouldn't be a bum then, would he? Yeah, Do you know exactly. what I mean? If you put yourself in his shoes, there's a whole, there's a whole different outlook on it. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, like you said, they don't see the hours and that put in. And if if they really did, I think a lot of people, a lot of people would have a whole different mindset on how boxers... Like, for example, this is a good time to talk about, you know, like the YouTube event you was talking about. I think it's all well and good, everyone jumping in the ring and thinking, yeah, yeah, it is boxing, this stuff. I understand it for a good cause, right? But if you look at Logan Paul and KSI, for example, they've turned pro. Obviously, they've gone and they've took time out and they've seen what it actually takes to to compete at that level. And obviously, they've got a huge backing. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, their followers will come into boxing and it will be good. But they've see, obviously seen what it takes, hence why they've turned professional, right? Mm. I think some shows, I think, like it kind of makes a mockery out of boxing, I think, because it's kind of, you don't, like, like what you said, they don't see the hours put in. They don't see the ups and downs of the sport. They don't see like you being injured, you being hurt, black eye, do you know what I mean? This, that, the other. So I think like it's 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 kind of making a mockery out of, out of boxing because like I said, it's it's not appreciated. And the day it does get appreciated and the day someone, I don't know how they're going to show it. I understand you've got media and everything now, but it's not the same as actually being there. Because boxing now, 
is so much more, like I said, mental and emotional than it is physical. Yeah, does that yeah, make sense? Absolutely, it's a lot more emotion, emotional and mental than it is physical. So I think if people saw that, if people saw what they go through, they'd they'd appreciate it a lot more. They'd understand like, oh, it's not just the first round knockout. Have you seen everything that he's not that he's not allowed to do? Like go out. Like obviously, I don't drink when I feel like that. But in other people's in other people's cases, drink, eat this. Like there's certain foods when you go out, you can't eat, you can't do this, you can't do that. So. I, I understand, like they do, like people do it for a good cause and everything. But I think it's kind of, I think most boxers would agree with me in this case. It's kind of frustrating mm. because they get most, they get more recognition than your average hardworking boxer would get. Yeah, Does yeah. That, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, that's, that's that's what that's, I just had to make that point. Really. No, no, no. I completely understand. <clears throat> and 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 you know, just speaking actually from uh, from kind of some some of the guys who were involved with that actually you know they they almost felt the same way that actually yeah. you know we don't we don't want this to become uh too much of like a you know Harlem Globetrotters yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean we don't want it to be like yeah. that and i think um i think as long as the the focus is on kind of bringing people to the sport of boxing 100%, 100%. that's the main thing yeah. because then you know people you know young fighters you know i think you're you're sponsored now you've, yeah, yeah. you've got a good grounding you yeah. you've got a contract with you know Frank Warren, yeah, so yeah. you've got a good base, but there's a lot of people out there that you know don't have opportunities. They're, they're unknown. Um, you know, one of the things that I always kind of say to, to to you know my friends is the best boxer in the world. You know, why is it that the best best boxers in the world only come from England and America? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a huge world out yeah, there. There's yeah. a lot of boxers out there. Yeah, yeah. It's about where the spotlight is. Mm. You know, where people's attention, where are people focusing on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where the money will exactly. go. Exactly. It's like Conor McGregor jumping in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, but mad. Yeah, he's got zero experience. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. But he's jumping in with the best box in the world. There's people like you know Amir Khan, for example, Pacquiao that that want to do rematches with, mm, but they can't get it. Exactly. McGregor's getting it. Yeah. So I think that's that's when it's the the fine line between you know really kind of almost taking the piss and then actually you know doing something good for the Appreciate sport. Appreciate the sport. Yeah. So so from your side of things, uh, you know. The, the kind of the, the effort that you you put into it. what what's what's a, a typical training week look like for you outside of outside of um fight kind of camp, camp yeah and then in fight camp outside of fight camp is I'll train I still train every day Monday to Monday to Saturday I always have Sunday off but it's literally just training it'll just be training once a day it'll be not overdoing it whether that be uh, boxing or whether that be a bit of strength and conditioning or or even just a bit of swimming or something. Do you know what I mean? Just to keep, just keep the body active, yeah. keep the body ticking over, keep the weight down. But in camp, it's a whole different story. It's training twice a day. The morning session will be, let's say, for example, uh, every every day would be boxing in the morning around, what, 10, 11 o'clock. It'd be a solid two, two and a half hour boxing session. And when I say boxing session, it's, it's a lot more than just boxing. It's going there, warming up, hitting the pads, practicing that one move, like, like a million times for the whole week, do you know what I mean? And then in the evening, it would be either a conditioning session or a strength session. Like obviously, I separate both of them too. Obviously, I train uh, my boxing sessions I do in Fort Galaxy Gym in Ilford with Terry Dunson. And my strength and conditioning I do with Josh uh, at CrossFit Momentum. So yeah, uh, that's that's what it looked like in camp. I understand when I say it, it doesn't sound too hard. But like I said, it's about seeing because seeing is believing. But uh, once I get the opportunity to fully show, show how I train exactly to down to the specifics, that's when I think people, not just me, other boxers, I'm talking about other boxers on behalf, that's when people will really see what actually, what it takes, mm. what what it takes for the performance, win, win or lose on, on fight night, to put on that spectacular for all the people watching. So so what would you, because it sounds, it sounds almost like... Um, it, it it almost sounds like a, a bit of a frustration that you have that people don't get to see. Mm, no one knows. It. Apart from your team, you know no one I mean? really sees it. Yeah, they see like you hitting the pads. Oh, he's looking good and that. But I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I don't know how myself how you'd show how it show it. But one day it will be shown. Like like you asking me now. Oh, what's what's your training like? I've give you. I've give you tra my training. Mm. It. You would think. Oh yeah, he just does boxing or not you. But you know what I'm saying. Um, you. Oh, he just does boxing. He just does this. He just does that. But when you see it, it's a whole another another story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and again, like like I said, we just see you on the fight night, exactly, and 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 that's about it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if if you win, the guy was a bum. If you lose, but to be fair, you know actually, I, mean? I got to make a point on that not everyone's interested actually in in what you put in. Do you know what I mean? Not everyone's interested in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? They're interested. Oh, just what happens on the fight night? Because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. they're paying a twenty pound twenty pound on TV just to watch you or their ticket to watch you. Obviously, that's greatly appreciated because. 
people who watch boxing, like the fans and the uh, spectators and supporters, are what make boxing. If it was mm. just down to the boxers, boxing wouldn't be what it is today. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I'm not saying oh, I did this, that, the other. I'm just, I'm just like that's my point of view. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it should be concentrated on more. It should be there should be more exposure to that. Should be more, more spotlight on that. Okay, the, the the work that goes into the work it. that goes into it. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. That makes a lot of sense. So, 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 so nine fights deep now. Yep. Right. Um, five five KOs. Yep. Um, the the rest are on points. Uh, the rest are on points. Yeah, yeah. on points. So not only have you stopped a man within the allotted time. Yeah, yeah. But you've actually gone the full distance as well. Yeah, yeah. What's the 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 kind <laughs> of what's going through your head um when you are kind of are these are these ten round fights? Are these twelve rounds? No, no, the fights? longest I've had is a six rounds. Is a scheduled was eight round off was eight the last rounder. one, but the longest I've gone is six rounds. Six rounds, yeah. right? So, 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 what's your mentality like when you're kind of four rounds into a fight, five rounds into a fight? You're punching this guy in the face. He's punching you. You're having to, you yeah. know, duck the punches, yeah. dodge them. Yeah. Um, you're obviously getting tired at this point as well. Yeah, your energy's yeah, yeah. getting course. drained. Yeah, yeah. And and as you said, it's more mental than it is physical. Yeah. So hundred percent. How are you? What's the conversation going on in your head at this point? You know, in these later stage rounds. In my head, it's I've, the physical work and everything has been done. So your body is conditioned to to what you're going to do on fight night. But your your brain only you can do it yourself. Your mentality only you can do it yourself. So it's like you said, say you're six rounds like six rounds deep in a fight, and say it's a hard fight. You need to be mentally switched on to be able to switch the tactics without your coach telling you because in the three minutes he can't he can't stop and say oh, I do this like you can do in sparring you've got to be able to figure it out for yourself I think that's the difference between what makes a good fire and what makes a great fire is all the mentality you, know, you can ask anyone you can ask all the world champions that's what it boils down to, that's what it boils down to. yeah and I think whenever <laughs> whenever I've seen uh, kind of a convers- like interviews with, with Mike Tyson especially back in you know his, his heyday yeah. it was always a case of um, you know he would just stare at the guy as it soon as the guy break would, him mentally yeah exactly. exactly as soon as the guy's eyes, eyes yeah, yeah. would move he would know that okay I'm going to kill this guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. right or, or I think uh, Muhammad Ali would, <laughs> would, would whisper <laughs> into his uh, opponent's ears like you know the Black Panthers outside you know you're not leaving this place alive you <laughs> yeah, know yeah, yeah. You know, he would just like mess that's with it, them mentally yeah. and yeah, 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 exactly. That's what it is. Any psychological psychology way you can get over your opponent makes a massive difference. Because like I said, you're going to be as fit as each other. You're going to be as strong as each other. You're going to be as ready as each other. But it's down to you. It's down to you as a man, as a person who wants it the most, as a person who... Say if I could defeat you mentally, I'd do that. I'd do that straight away. Or if you could do it to me and we're fighting, you'd do that to me straight away. Do you know what I mean? But that's what it takes. Who can and yeah, who can get that psychological edge over their opponent? What what do you think of all of the the kind of the kind of promotion of fights where they they kind of they 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 say a lot of kind of insults and, yeah. and slurs and stuff like that. Yeah, you, yeah. How do you feel about that in terms of because a lot of again let, let's talk about McGregor and, yeah. and Khabib for example, right? Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of lot of things that were said. Yeah, yeah. You know, alcohol was given offered to him, and yeah. you know he's kind of crossing yeah, boundaries head, exactly, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and then in the fight when he's getting battered by Khabib, he's just like, "Oh, it's just business, <laughs> yeah, right?" Yeah, of course. That's that's um, the, yeah, that's what it is. Because if sports didn't have that, it wouldn't be sports entertainment. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't have that. It, it needs. So you're that. not mad at that? No, 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 I'm not mad okay. at that. That that's needed. That, okay. that stuff is needed because it sells fights. It gets people involved in okay. the sport. It gets people interested. It's just like anything. Everyone loves a bit of commotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone loves a bit of drama because, like I said, in sports or in boxing or MMA, whatever it is, everyone's opinion is valid. Mm-hmm. Because they start arguing with each other, then like this, that, the other, and then like, oh, I bet you this match he'll win, this, that, the other, and then it gets everyone involved. It gets people. They think, yeah, I want to support this guy because he did that. Yeah, he's yeah. quite, he's quite funny. Just like the Khabib and McGregor thing. There's two total different people. Do you know what I mean? Ex- extremely. You had one quiet, humble yeah, yeah. person who's very who believed in himself. Yeah. And then you had McGregor on the other hand, someone who's selling the fight, someone who's just a maniac, like crazy guy who people also loved. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's what it is. It's, it's a whole point of selling the sport. That's it. That's key. Like I said, like I said, sports wouldn't be what it is without the people watching it. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, it wouldn't be sports at all. Do you know? It would just be, yeah, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be sports entertainment. It wouldn't be televised because no one would watch it. So they they make the sport up as much as the athletes do. So when do you think <clears> you'll get, you're going to get to a point then where you're going to start having um, 
these type of rivalries in yeah, your yeah, sport? Because yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, I can I think imagine. Very soon, very soon. Probably are, my are, next fight. Are there people? This guy who yeah, are you fighting yeah. in your next fight? Then uh, it will be. It should be announced in the next week. Okay, can't announce nothing now, but it will okay. be a next. In the, I'm announced. It's a big one. Okay, it's a big one. So yeah, it will be. It'll it'll be live on telly. It'll be live okay. on um, uh, BT Sports. That's okay. what I can tell you. But yeah, it'll be hopefully next, man. And then uh, that's the next stage. And I'm kind of look, looking forward to it already. <laughs> so this guy you don't like him then? No, it's not that I don't like him, but I think that there will be a few verbals. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But that's that's needed. It's need and and it's new to me because I've never experienced that before. It's new to me and it's something that I'm I'm quite eager to see how I how how I will react to it. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So 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 now now you're you're kind of every step of the way things are getting bigger for you. Everything's getting kind of um, like you said. This fight's going to be on BT Sports yeah. now. Um, uh, how how is this? You're almost at a turning point, actually, um, because if you walk down the road, yeah. I don't think that many people are going to, you know, necessarily know who you are straight yeah, yeah. off the bat, yeah, right? No, they don't, yeah. Uh, unless they're, you know, they're, they're really into their boxing and they know yeah, they know yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. They, they wouldn't, right? Yeah. Um, you're almost on a transitional period at the moment, I think. And I think most fighters kind of have that where, you know, it's only when they get to their 14th, 15th fight. Then they start getting exposure. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What are you kind of enjoying most about being unknown? And what do you think you're going to miss most when you do start to get some notoriety? Yeah, first of all, I've got to get to that point, And inshallah, I will. But I don't know. I think I'll stay the same. Like, whether, whether it happens or not, I'll stay the same, man. I'm like, do you know what I mean? I'll still, still still be the same person. There's, there's not, what's the difference? People just know you. That's just like anything. That's, that's, it's really, it's, in my head, my opinion is it's really not that deep. Some people thrive off it. Oh, yeah, listen, he knows me, this, that, the other. If you're working hard, if you're making noise, everyone's going to know you anyway, right? And if you're if you're confident in what you do, you know, you know people are going to know you eventually. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't think it fazes me at all. I don't think it fazes me at all. I just stay humble. Do you know what I mean? Stay, you, you know what I mean? Just stay focused. Just, that's it. Just, just stay focused, really. I'll, just, I'll be the same person. There won't be no difference. And I, I won't miss anything because, like I said, there won't be any different To me... Mm. There might be different as it uh, like eventually say inshallah I do win a world title or something. You might not be able to walk down the street just normally. Yeah, that's just normal, isn't it? What, yeah, what's wrong yeah. with taking a picture with a couple couple people on the way? Nothing. I don't think anything's wrong with it. I understand I haven't been there yet, so I can't talk from a position from that from that position. Obviously, some some celebrities must must be tired of it, mm. but I don't think I would to be fair because they're supporting you. They could easily like to turn around to like hate you, do you know what I mean? but you'd rather them love you than them yeah, hate you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. sounds, it sounds like you're just very grateful for boxing. 100%. 100%. And, and, and whatever comes from boxing, so be it. That's it. Simple. Just take every step. Take everything as it comes. Like, I think people are too, boxers nowadays are too concerned of how how they portray themselves outside of the ring than inside of the ring. Like they also, they're getting it mixed up and then they yeah, get in the yeah. ring and then they get beaten up. How, how do you feel about um, boxing as it is right now? Um, because... <clears throat> Especially like heavyweight boxing, maybe it is different for heavyweights, right? But what what I see now is that people will generally have one or two fights a year, and mm. they'll be like mega fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, um, kind of, you know, why 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 can't people fight every three months, four months? Is it about building a hype and media and getting the paycheck out of it, or or is it the fact that no, look, we you know three four fights a year is is, is way too much for any pro to do? I think if you put it down to the boxers and there was no promotion and there was no managers involved and there was no sponsors involved and everything, the boxers would fight every day. Okay. <laughs> They'd fight every day. It's At that level, it's, mu- it's, it's a business. Okay. It's a business and there's like percentages involved, there's dates involved, there's media teams involved, there's Sky Sports, BT Sports, everyone. So it's, if it was under the boxers, like I said, it, they would fight every day. Okay. But it's not, up to, it's not down to them at the end of the day. Their job is just to get in there and entertain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, all all it boils down to at that level is the uh, the promoters and all the all the businesses around it really. It's it's that simple. I wanna I wanna just kind of um uh, I I do wanna kind of get some of your insights in terms of some of the things happening in boxing. Yeah, of but course. Before we do move on to that, I just kind of wanna bring your timeline up to speed now to where you are today. Okay. And then kind of see where things are moving forward. Yep. So. So, so you've got your next fight coming up yep. uh, in the next couple of months, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Um, that'll be a, a televised, uh, a televised fight on BT yep. Sport. Yep. Um, that's going to be a big one as well. Um, inshallah, you make it through <coughs> that fight with, uh, you know, inshallah. unscathed, and and you batter the guy. <laughs> um, and moving forward, looking forward into your career, then, 
right? You, you've talked about, you know, you want to remain humble. You do want to kind of be a, almost a man of the people. If people are into boxing and they and, and they like what you do, then you're happy to kind of you know, show them that love back to them. And that's not an yeah. issue for you. What do you want to be remembered for in this sport? Um, you know, when you look back, when you're 50 or 60 years yeah. old, what do you want people to kind of, you know, when they say Hamza Shiraz, what do you want people to remember that name associated with? Just greatness. Literally greatness. Hamza Shiraz and greatness. I want them to go besides, besides each other. You know what I mean, it's big, but I, f- I fully believe in myself that I can get there, inshallah. Like one day I will get there. But yeah, that's what I want to be remem- remembered as. And I think what what helps keep humble, that like obviously I want to be, uh, I want to be remembered as humble and, just honest. Yeah. Just yeah. honest. You know, so many boxers nowadays that have sob stories. They grew up from the streets. Most of them did, but but they always, <laughs> they, they hold on to that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I understand. We understand. Like, this, <laughs> you've gone through that. But I think with me, it's just honest. Like, it's just hard working. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. hard work. Hard work beats talent. Hard work beats anything. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think what also helps with that is the religion, Islam. It, it's, it helps a lot. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you guided. It gives you a path to follow in life. And off that path, that and boxing, I think they go beside each other because they like respect everything and it's a way of life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. It's a way of life and I think that's what helps and that's what will also help with being remembered. That's what I honestly believe. That That's what will help being remembered. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think some of the, the path that a lot of the great people have gone down is obviously kind of extending their hand and reaching out and kind of building kind of almost social projects course, as well. Yeah, like, like, let me ask you a question for example. Who do you class as the greatest? The greatest? Yep. Uh, for me, I would say that there's uh, one, and it's a it's a very easy one to throw out Muhammad Ali. Exactly. Um, and if you look at him, he used Islam as as his as Islam and boxing besides each other. And yeah, I don't think yeah. you can go wrong. I don't think you can go wrong. And, and actually, the, the second person that I was going to say is is on the path to the greatness is someone like Khabib. There you go. So <laughs> again, you know, That's hand it. in hand. Yeah. And and I think I think because the main thing is is that they're not only living a very <clears throat> clean lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned as well, obviously, that you you know you don't drink. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, being Muslim, I'm sure both of us know a lot of people that are Muslim and they do drink, right? Yeah, yeah. So even boxing has kept you away from doing 100%. that as well, right? Yeah. Kept you away from drugs, kept you away from a lot of things. Um, and I think sport does that in general. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's really, really kind of um, good to see that someone in your position who's achieved what you've achieved and you have the ambition and drive to get to where you do want to get to. Mm. You're doing this within the framework of being a Muslim, you know, uh, representing the people, your people. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, our people. What, what have there been any situations in your boxing career where people have wanted you to compromise on your faith, on your religion or anything like that? Not really. Cause I know how strong I am and I would never, ever do that. But uh, so you could say like after fights of like a couple after parties and that you go to them and there's people drinking you're offered drinks and that they they don't know do you know what I mean so they're just being nice people but yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to be strong enough and, and it's not just used to people around you you have to make sure your whole team represents themselves as a whole as one as as united as strong do you know what I mean so you could get one bad one in the team do you know what I mean you could potentially get one but at the, at the end of the day it's their job and it's your team's job to stay as one does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To stay as one. Yeah, man. But is that is that it's that Kizza guy that's that, that one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's a top guy. He's, he, he's a top guy, man. He's a top guy. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, cool. So 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 um I think I think um, you know, the the audience, the people watching, I think they have a bit of better picture of who you are. And, yeah. and that that's what I really wanted to do is I wanted to kind of um tell your story. Yeah. Um so that people understand who you are because yeah, yeah. I you know, I genuinely want people to support you, I want people to back you, I want people you, you know, even when I've been watching some of your fights, yeah. like you said, you know, you had to start off with your movement yeah. and I can see that in the way that you're fighting as well. The way that you move, you've yeah. got, you know, when I saw kind of some of your jabs, I'm yeah. like, well, there's this, like spears, you know, <laughs> the way that you're just throwing them out there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, Alhamdulillah, we've got someone within our community who, you know, has a very, very bright future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously I, I pray that, um, you know, that that future exceeds all of our expectations you, and yeah. you achieve greater than what you even believe of yourself as well. Yeah. Um, and 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 again, you know, everyone watching, make sure that you tune into his fights. I'll definitely post about them as well. So when it does get released, mm. do follow me, and I'll Wicked give you a shout out. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to kind of end this almost uh, as a little bit of a, a bonus for the fans because Ooh, a lot of fans is. watching this will be boxing fans. Yep. Um, there's uh, a few big names that that you're 
kind of closely linked to yeah. um and uh and, and others that you know we all know and we all talk about on a daily basis so um tyson fury uh yep. have you met him before yep i met What's him he, like? he, he watched my debut okay and he he actually gave me a stand ovation and it was a big thing for him at the time and actually my last fight he he came to watch it because um but he just missed it okay and there's a little clip on my twitter if you go watch it where he was like oh he missed his fight it's a good fight at him so you're getting praise for him you can't go wrong yeah man it's good i mean like no, I won't say I'm linked with him, but we're under, we're under the same promotion. He's massive. I mean, I'm yeah, in the bottom. Yeah. He's at the top. But um, yeah, no, it's good to have him. It's good to have him because people who don't know boxing, they're like, oh, who are you promoted by? Just be the same guy Tyson Fury's promoted by. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not Frank Warren, the same guy Tyson Fury's promoted by. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So exactly. yeah, you, that's the good thing about it. So, so, so you mentioned as well about how in the amateurs it's a bit dirtier than in the pros. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, um, you know, without me kind of getting too political on this, yeah. but Tyson Fury banged out Deontay Wilder. <laughs> he, you know, in my opinion, he definitely yeah, should have won that yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, I agree as well. Yeah, so, so from your side of things, when you're looking at this, you're looking at the judge. I mean, the judges' scorecards, like, mad. What were they looking at? Yeah, right? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, but you got to remember Wilder, the WBC. He was, he's the only. Well, he was at the time the only American heavyweight champion, mm -hmm. and that's a big thing they need to hold on to. So I think, I think next time Tyson he would do an even better job not many people do believe that but like I fully believe he will but that was his first real fight <coughs> Back you know, after like two years health. out three years out whatever it was exactly. right and do you know what I mean like, it's mad so but, when he's well now imagine what he'll do now yeah right? exactly yeah. so 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 this whole thing of obviously you know he's in America and it's WBC therefore the decision will kind of go to him yeah. does that does that ever worry you in your fights do you ever think like I have to get the KO because you know maybe maybe it's not going to go my way like that's obviously not a fair decision it's a biased decision yeah, 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 so yeah. how does that play in as a, as a boxer's mind I, I'll just be content as long as I give it my 100% I know I'll win because my 100% will always always get me to the top inshallah do you know what I mean but no 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 I don't think it adds pressure or nothing like that I think it's and I won't say it's biased I think it's definitely in favour of your opponent so it's home team advantage yeah, basically. home team advantage that's all it is that's all it okay. is yeah, yeah. but it was a lot more at the time because you got to look at it if if he did I think the knockdown helped actually in the last round. Yeah, yeah. But I think they needed him. They needed an excuse, and that was the excuse given. Right. Okay. So you kind of okay. can't give them any excuses whatsoever, even though he did win by quite a lot, in my opinion. A few rounds, you cannot give them any excuses. Do you know what I mean? Or they just latch onto it and just give the draw like they didn't. He's still champion. And he's defending his belt, isn't it? Yeah. But now they got Ruiz in the picture as well, and it's so. a moving on to, <laughs> to, to to the second half of this, right? So. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've spoken a lot about kind of uh, mental health and, and how you have to be very certain that you're going to knock this guy out yeah. before going into the fight. Yep. And and that certainty is what really kind of gives you that Cemented. extra edge. Yeah. So so we saw Anthony Joshua fight Andy Ruiz. Um, I, I'm guessing that you watched that one live yeah, as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That was, I think ev everyone was kind of watching that one, right? <laughs> yeah. And and I remember when I watched it, I, I missed his entrance. Okay. So I didn't see his entrance. So a lot of people were like, oh, you know, he's getting the massage. Yeah, and, yeah. So I didn't see that. But what I did see was when he got the first knockdown, yeah. he rushed into the second, in, into it, the attack away. again. Yeah, yeah. When he did that, I was like, nah, he he's going to get banged, yeah. right? But for you <laughs> watching that, right? And obviously post-fight, all the press conferences and all the interviews that he's done, to me, he doesn't seem like the same person he was before that fight. Mm -hmm. What was your take on that fight when you were watching it? He he definitely wasn't the same because there was something a bit off about if you were like the ring entrance. That's that's where I kind of noticed like oh something. So a you bit, clocked from yeah, the ring yeah, then as well. Okay. Yeah, but most people did. It wasn't just me. Most yeah, boxing yeah. people did. But like I said, only Anthony Joshua knows. Only he knows because I think at that level, like I'm saying, like I keep banging on about it being a mental game, but it honestly really is because physically you saw he prepared well. You saw the shape of the yeah, fellow. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But I think it was all up in his in his, in his head. I think that's all it was. I didn't think... I f that's what I personally... I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. It could have been something that happened in camp. But then again, that's going on to my other point of people don't see what happens in camp. So no one knows apart from him and his team members. So I could be sitting here saying, yeah, I think it was this. I think it was that. But I could be totally wrong. But what I am pretty certain on was the ring walk wasn't 100%. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I'm really going to say. But yeah, you could, you could, anyone could tell. But I don't want to say, yeah, it could be this, it could be that. Only he, him and his team know. And I don't think no one will know until the day he retires. I think that's when he'll be honest about right, it. Right, okay, yeah, Because yeah, then yeah. none of his opponents can get an edge on him. That's it's it. just like anything, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then Andy Ruiz, Joshua, part two. What's your prediction for that one? I think Ruiz wins again. You reckon Ruiz yeah, is taking yeah, it home? Yeah, I think he will. I don't want him to win again. Yeah, yeah. Because we need, obviously, AJ and hopefully Fury one day will be massive in England. That'll be huge. Huge. For that sake, I want AJ to win, but I don't, I just, I just don't think he will. 
think Ruiz is too quick, too much of a better infighter. Yeah, it's not even about being an infighter. I just think he's too slick. He could get knocked out. He could get knocked out for all I'm saying, and I could be totally wrong. Mm. But I just think he's too... I just think he's got too much boxing okay. ability. I met with, uh, you know, Ricky Funes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, I had a pad session with him. It's yeah, on my Instagram. yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, that, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Top yeah. trainer, yeah. So I was chatting to him, and he was like, look, <clears throat> I, you know, I've known Andy Ruiz for time. You know, the guy has been fighting 18-year-olds from the time he was eight. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, the guy's, like, he's yeah. fought men, grown men when he was exactly, boys. Yeah. So. I don't think um, Anthony Joshua phases him in any way. Mm. So it really is going to be a mental game from Anthony Joshua to kind of... Because you know, size-wise, yeah. the guy's twice... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he should. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, I think uh, I think it completely is a, is a mind game. Last two questions that I have for you no um, are, are, you know, kind of directly relevant for you. you you've touched on one um, quite a bit. Okay. Um, but the, the first question I want to ask yep. is, how has Islam shaped who you are today yep. and, and your career? Yep. Like I said, it's it's guided me. It's given me a pathway from when I was younger to now to just be a, a better person, be guided, you know what I mean? Pray, pray as much as I can and just follow. It gives me something to follow. But then boxing and Islam, like I said, they go side and side. They benefit each other. They complement each other. So anything I do boxing is relevant in Islam. If I do it in Islam, is relevant in boxing. Like respect your elders, respect your coaches. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like anything really. But it's it's been ma- it's massive. It's huge. It's helped me a lot. It still is helping me, and it always will help me. Do you know what I mean? So inshallah, yeah, man. And and just to finish things off, um, when you get to the age, inshallah, of forty years old, yeah. fifty years old, yeah. what's the one thing that you know right now yeah. to be very true? Yeah. Um, that you would want yourself to kind of keep hold of. Yeah. And remind yourself of, you know when you get to the age of 40. What would you mean in terms of? So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Okay. So uh, in the last interview that I had, yeah. I asked the same question and uh, the brother said, um, he, he he would remind himself that the little things don't matter. Yeah. That's what he said, right? So what would you- I, I think it'd be just be true to who you are, not who you're not. Does that make sense? I think that's what it would be. And just be honest, just be honest, man. There's so many people lying nowadays. Mm. And just, like I said, like holding on to stories, sob stories, and just be honest, be hardworking, be truthful. That's it. Simple. It's a long way. <laughs> Absolute pleasure, my bro. Okay, man. Thank you very Inshallah, much. Inshallah, I think, uh, you know, it's a pleasure for me to interview you at this stage in your career. Yeah, no, thank you. I man. hope in, in years time to come, we continue this and, uh, you know, we get updated podcasts. Yeah, man. And we find out how things are going. Get you in a few more career. views as well. <laughs> 100%, 100%. I think I'm giving you the views on this one. That's though, it. Isn't it? No, I'm <laughs> But anyways, bro, look, pleasure. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon, man. Wicked, man. Good luck on your next fight as well. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, man.